Hello, everybody, and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing. Today, we're going to talk all about cathedral ceilings. In my studio here, I have cathedral ceilings. They are vaulted. Uh, the terminology cathedral is what's used a lot online for the terminology and building of vaulted ceilings. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. And when you are creating cathedral ceilings, one of the main things you have to factor in is moisture control. So when we have a traditional cathedral ceiling, the way to control moisture is to have soffits and air flow through. The problem with that is that with soundproofing, it means that we compromise our soundproofing. So I'm going to talk about two different ways to design your cathedral ceiling so that you can have proper soundproofing. Before I jump in, I want to say that I do have a free resource for you. This is my free soundproofing workshop. You can download it right away at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's jump into this lesson on how to soundproof cathedral ceilings. <laughs> So the first method is the traditional, I'm gonna call it traditional method, and this is what I did in my studio. And it is also what I really wouldn't recommend for a soundproof studio. The reason being that you allow too much air to come into your attic space and thus decreasing the amount of transmission loss you're trying to get with your whole system. So that said, I'm just gonna describe it so you know what it is. If you're talking with a builder, there's a chance that they are probably gonna use this method because it is the most popular method when designing cathedral ceilings. So essentially the way that it works is that you have soffits on the eaves of your building. And so on the long side of my studio, we have soffits on both sides. The soffits have have little holes where they're allowing air to come up into the roof cavity and then we use these plastic vents which allow you know a one inch one to two inch air space to flow through underneath the sheathing and then up through the roof cap the ridge cap vent on the top of my studio and the peak of the roof and this system allows there to be enough airflow that moisture will not build up underneath the wood sheathing of your roof. And if you don't do this, then you will have moisture build up and it can drip down through your insulation and actually start to wet the drywall of your ceiling. So this is a, a big deal in construction and you need to do it right. So that's the traditional method. And you can see we did that in my studio and it works fairly well. I will say that, you know, my studio is still soundproof. It still does a great job, but it would be just a little bit better if we had actually sealed up that roof cavity. The second method, which I would recommend, this might be my number one recommendation, is to use closed cell spray foam. Now, spray foam is used to insulate homes all the time, but with a soundproofing system, it's a great way to insulate your cathedral ceiling because it will make it so you don't have to do that soffit system that I talked about before, and it'll make it so that you can actually close up your entire attic space, the space between your ceiling and your, your roof, uh, and just spray foam in there, and then that will create a superior soundproofing than if you did the traditional method for soundproofing a cathedral ceiling. I would say I do recommend that you hire a professional to do this. There are DIY kits out there, but if you do some reading, you can see reviews of people saying how they would never ever spray foam uh, on their own again. It's, it's a nasty business and you want to do it right the first time. This is something where you don't want to leave it up to chance. So hire out the professionals. It is a little bit more expensive than other building methods, but it could be your best option. The third method to insulate your roof if you have a peaked cathedral ceiling in your studio is to actually insulate on top of the roof sheathing. Now this is a, a green home design that I've seen used a little bit, but I don't think it's quite as popular. One of the reasons may be that it's actually maybe not as efficient as using the soffit system. But because we are doing a soundproof room, we wanna make sure that we keep that system closed, like I said before, so there's no air gaps leading into your roof attic area. So that said, you can still 
seal off this roof attic space between your drywall and your sh roof sheathing. But before you put on your shingles, you're gonna wanna put on specific rigid fiberglass insulation designed specifically for the exterior of your roof sheathing. Now again, I'm not gonna get too much into specifics because I do recommend that you hire a professional to do this as well. The reason being, if you leave even a minute space between the sheathing, uh, between the uh, insulation panels, uh, this could lead to moisture getting in and ruining the whole system. So because the stakes are so high with moisture and not wanting to have damage in your studio, I would still hire a professional to do this. But at least now you know some three different options for creating your cathedral ceiling and making sure it is soundproof. Again, I recommend using spray, closed cell spray foam or insulating on the exterior side of your roof sheathing to make sure that you don't have moisture buildup underneath that roof sheathing. All right, I hope this video was helpful. As always, you can take a deeper dive into soundproofing by signing up for that free soundproofing workshop. Just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next week with another lesson on soundproofing or acoustic treatment to help you build the soundproof studio of your dreams. All right, see you all later. Thank you.